welcome to episode 144 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my co-host, Warren Sklaris here. How you doing, Warren? Hey, doing good. Survived the uh, Facebook outage of 2021. <laughs> Uh, it was like apocalyptic uh, Facebook outage. <laughs> everything like that. Like, because I, you don't realize how much is actually tied to Facebook until it goes down. Like, I was in the middle of like an uh, Oculus VR game and the whole thing just went kaplooey. And then I tried to get on Facebook that it rebooted my router, probably like everybody else in the world. I switched Wi Fi. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun, uh, it was a fun hour. But. It's, I think well, it's back. Better than all the all the private information that that everybody uh, was. Uh, we won't talk about that. But uh, that the, yeah, you know yeah. that five hundred billion accounts that were compromised and, and, yeah, and people got. But uh, I, 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 have, I, I have little commenting on that at this point. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we we could go into both directions of it, but I'm not even going to do that. Yeah. Um, so I did mention at the end of last last show that I was supposed to have my car. It didn't arrive. A little bit of a delay here. I'm using Carvana, so they um, they had a bit of a, a delay of shipping it, shipping from Arizona up to up to Illinois. So uh, I'm going to have it next week finally. And then hopefully uh, I'll get get a week under my belt so I can give everybody a review of car, my my view of CarPlay because uh, uh, you know everybody's. Oh, I had it for quite a while. Well, it's it can be new to me, so you'll hear something. Here's something and tell me. I'll tell everybody about it. So, but let's uh, get to the news. So we got uh, lots of new stories, and uh, we're going to talk about beta. Of course, beta seven just came out yesterday as we record. And um, uh, you uh, you actually dabbled into some NFC tags. I'm going to ask you about uh, about that, how that went with with your Tesla, and uh, and lots of other fun stuff here. So let's uh, just go ahead and jump into things here. Um, first story: it's Mac rumors. Uh, Apple adjusts trade-in value of iPad Pro, iPhone 11, and select Mac models. Apple has adjusted the trade-in values of a number of its products, including the majority of the iPad and Mac lineup, and uh, made some changes to the iPhone. Uh, Apple's trade-in program allows customers to trade in older devices, which I do, and receive a certain amount of value for them uh, towards the purchase of a new device. The exact trade-in value is measured by its condition, when it was released, its manufacturer, you know, all that fun stuff. So it looks like they've done some uh, some good increases here. Um, so uh, in the iPad lineup, the iPad Pro, was in, the value went up $45 to $580. Um, the standard um, iPad trading value uh, went down, so it was like 15 bucks to 235 um, not too much about the Mac, but uh, then the iPhone, um, the, uh, the, the uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max is... Uh, at five fifteen now, which is one up fifteen dollars in the eleven and four sixty five went up five, and then the eleven uh, that was eleven pro, and then the eleven uh, it was twenty uh, to three eight three eighty. Um, even the success, they're still taking you money sixty bucks. I know my uh, family member uh, traded in the, her iPhone eight, and they gave her one hundred twenty bucks for it. So um, I think Apple's been pretty generous with trade ins. So uh, what do you think? I think this is really a good thing. Keeps the values, and we'll have some other stories about this. But yeah, I mean, you know, like we always say, you'll it's the least effort to do the trade in with Apple. That's like the the easiest route yeah exactly and you get decent money for it but not great the hardest is selling on your own um which is there's plenty of options um some work well some are horrible um but it's work um but yeah i mean i'm i'm hoping soon i'll have a reason to trade in my ipad pro for something newer i'm open too yeah we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll hit, hit upon that uh, topic in just a bit here but uh um, uh, yeah, good, good to see. It's, it is really good to see that the value is, uh, is holding its own here, uh, for, uh, for them. Um, the, uh, you know, I'll take, I'll take that order here. We'll have it in the show notes here. Um, and, uh, you go back and if you were, if you recall, Gazelle decided to stop their trading program, which I was surprised. I used Gazelle many years ago, as you, as you just talked about, um, that, uh, they, they were a great service, allowed you to, uh, trade in your, 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 Technology devices, mostly iPhones, iPads. They took Android and others. Um, but back in February, uh, they decided to to end their device trading program, uh, which I was surprised. Uh, actually, they announced this back in December of 2020. Um, but they, they they reversed course as of April 5th. Uh, they, uh, Gazelle is once again accepting online trades for smartphones and tablets. Um, apparently, 
they they had a change of hearts, realizing that hmm, maybe it, there is some money to be made in this is this business. So, and did you use have you used Gazelle before? I, I I have. I think I've sold a few things to them, and then you know, I I basically shop around for the best place that will take it. This is what I normally go through. I usually shop around for the best place that will take it, never sell it, and then you know post something on Facebook and sell it to somebody on Facebook. But right. Um, yeah, Gazelle is it's funny. They said we listen to our customers and they want us to do this yeah. again. So that, that's what we're doing. Um, yeah, as far I mean, they obviously need manpower to take the devices in and check them, uh, refurbish them to, to resell them. So that costs money there. Um, they, you know, the, the goal is to make a profit. So you want to, you know, buy low, sell high. So right. that's, you know what they're trying to do. So they're trying to get your devices and. You know, there's a lot of people there, and believe me, I I know there's there's a lot of people there that will trade in a you know a perfectly good device that has one little problem that they don't know how to fix, and they'll just say, I, I you know, I'm just going to trade it in. Um, you know, they'll get this low ball offer, and you know they'll be okay with it, and and you know because they'll fix it up to something nice, and they'll sell it. They resell it. Right? So uh, yeah, no, it's it's good. Um, yeah, we used to have a store here called Computer Exchange that was great, where you could actually go with your devices and they would buy it right on the spot, and they would give you credit for something else or give you money. But that didn't last. But Gazelle still has these uh, lockers where you could um, put your phone in, and they will still take them that way as well. Yep. No, it's uh, so good. Good news. Good to hear that they'll keep it comp- keep it competitive. So. Um, we're going to talk about Beta here in just a minute, but I wanted to talk about the Apple TV here a little bit on uh, Mac Rumors. Upcoming Apple TV could support 120 hertz refresh rate, according to the tvOS 14.5 beta code. Um, Apple is working on a new version of the Apple TV, which is good news. We talked about the, the new remote that they were also working on uh, last time. Um, and uh, they're saying it could feature 4K 120 hertz video output. The evidence was found in the TV's uh, OS 14.5 uh, beta code that was on uh, by 9to5 Mac uh, and sh- listed multiple instances of 120 hertz. It supports 120 hertz in, in the code. So um, so as with the 120 fre- re- refresh rate on the iPad Pro models, they're saying that the refresh rate mode um, on the Apple TV would allow for smoother performance uh, on 120 hertz TVs. And you know, not everybody has these TVs, so who knows <laughs> if that was even be worth anything here, so as far even having them. But it's good news at least to hear that there is going to be a new Apple TV. We're going to find out hopefully soon if something happens. Uh, what do you think of this? Um, I don't know if it's in the notes. Oh, yeah. The, the last thing we're going to talk about is the Apple Arcade getting more title yeah. so we'll talk about I'm that. going to tie that into the apple tv because again you know the apple tv could be a gaming alternative device and um the more they spec it up the more it's possible that they're going to you know promote it more as a gaming hybrid smart tv kind of thing which would be uh you know that's i'm surprised i haven't done it already um i just feel like there were so many opportunities with gaming um, you know, especially because people could use like their iPhones as controllers and you could do, you know, trivia games and so many things that you could do that they never did. Um, but yeah, they're kind of ramp it up. And I, you know, I, I don't know how much better it's going to be for the apps and for the picture. But I, again, I think the more powerful is going to be uh, targeting games. Yeah. And really, I, th- that that's probably a, a, a good point, you know, trying to make it uh is it going to be a gaming type device like an Xbox or a, or a PlayStation, you know, to justify the price? Because again, we've had this debate before. You know, you can go buy a TV device, you know, like Roku and Fire TV and all them, and it's like half the price. So, um, I think Apple really has to come of a justification. That is is this is this Apple TV going to be worth the, what they want to charge for? Because you know, Apple's not going to under lowball pricing of what they've been charging for for all these years. I, I'd be at least I'd be very surprised about that. Well, they keep improving it. So, I mean, if they, you know, there was always rumors that they might come out with like an Apple TV stick, kind of like Roku stick, right. something smaller. Uh, you know, hell, you could even probably put like some kind of AirPlay 2 stick device in there and like, you know, AirPlay it from, you know, maybe if the, maybe if this iPad with the screen ever comes out, like they're talking about. You know, I could see them having the iPad with a screen and then they sell like a thing that goes into your TV 
that mm-hmm. will kind of give you the Apple TV experience without the Apple TV. So there's a lot of things they could do for a cheaper option for Apple TV uh, that they never really did. So, that, you know, this article makes it sound like they're putting more into it rather than making it cheaper. And, and yeah, they'll charge us for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely going to be interesting. We'll see where it goes here. And um, let's uh, move on. And you know, in fact, let's move on and talk about Apple Arcade. Um that hit last week. I, I blink it, it, it. No, it happened. It actually, hit uh, a couple days ago here that Apple uh, uh, Arcade got a massive exp- expansion with 30 new games, including some hit iOS classics and more. Um, uh, they they had gotten a big wave of new games. Uh, so we're over 30 new titles, and a couple of them that's, that really stood out to me was uh, the NBA 2K21, which I haven't really checked out yet, but. That's a great one. There's a Star Trek um, one that was out. But the Oregon Trail, everybody remembers playing the Oregon Trail. And I, and I was pretty impressed with this, with this, uh, with this game uh, that's part of an arcade. Uh, and you know, I remember playing our Oregon Trail back in the old the old days of the Apple II with the just 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 text based gameplay and um, and and, you know, the old type graphics, but, uh, but they've always, they've always got also got all some of the classic games like chess and, and, uh, checkers and, uh, backgammon and all that stuff. Uh, but the Apple had a press release about this and, you know, decided to, to really, uh, step it up here, which is great. So, I mean, that really is going to bring some excitement to Apple Arcade. Cause a lot of, as far as I was concerned, I'm not a big gamer as it is. And, and I didn't think too many were too excited about it. Um, so, uh, what'd you think of this? Yeah, it was a nice surprise. I uh, woke up one morning and I heard about it, and I downloaded a few of them. Um, I, I like song. Uh, it's not song pop. Maybe it is song pop. There's a like a you know Nina tune kind of thing that I'm into, mm-hmm. and I used to play it all the time. But they used to push ads on me all the time, so now I play it without the ads, which is really nice. Um, downloaded a few other games uh, so far, um, and you know it's a good start. I wouldn't say it's you know you know the end no. of all end of, of things, no. but it's definitely a good start. <laughs> it is um, a good start. Got some I don't remember. I don't remember playing the uh, Oregon Trail. I remember okay. playing dope, dope Wars, Drug Wars. <laughs> you remember that okay. one where you had to, yeah. you, had a, you were like a drug dealer and it was turned base on text. <laughs> yeah. that was, that's what I remember. Um, but yeah, no, I'll uh, definitely keep looking for the things to download. I'm interested in, actually I did checkers. That's fun. Yep. Um, and then I did um, one other one, but yeah, there's a lot of class. So they, they put in classics, they put in uh, the new stuff like the NBA and they, um, and like kind of like parlor games kind of thing. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's all uh, fruit ninja. That's a big one that's in there. So oh, yeah. that one, that one uh, I downloaded that one too. All right. And then um, next story of Mac rumors, uh, iOS 14 adoption reached as an estimated 90% less than seven months after its launch. So less than seven months after its launch, iOS and iPad OS 14 are now installed in an estimated 90% of all compatible iPhones and iPads, according to data collected by mixed panels uh, adoption tracker. Um, in, in February, they show a graph here. It was at it was at eighty six percent now according uh, according to this this next uh, update is up to four percent here, um, and iOS was released iOS fourteen was released in September of twenty twenty as a notable iOS upgrade uh, beginning with the, bringing the widgets the home screen the app library a lot of uh, huge system wide changes so I think that's really what motivated a lot of people I would think is the widgets don't you think when when people went from iOS thirteen to iOS fourteen. Oh yeah, people are definitely you know. My son, when it first came yeah. out, in the way he's like, "Have you seen this?" I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. He's Those like, everybody in my everybody in my school is downloading the, the new update and doing this. So um, that definitely, uh, yeah, definitely propelled it forward. Uh, you know, the widgets were a big thing. Um, well, not much else. I don't remember anything else really being that huge on iOS 14. No, just but, what I had, yeah, just what I the, the app library was a big big thing. Uh, yeah, that the, one. And yeah, the, a new call. I you uh, some new UI changes that made some big differences too. So yeah, exciting, yeah. you know. And then if I translate transition over to the uh, to this next article, you know, iPhone 12 holds value uh, over 20 percent better than the Samsung Galaxy S 21 range. 
that just tells you that uh, um, before I go into the article uh, that uh, the adoption rate on on Android OSs is all over the place because there's so many devices out there and there's so many of them that don't uh, have don't can't even upgrade anymore. Um, so uh, and and that's that they have devices that are not maybe two or three or four years no three or four years old that you can't update anymore. I mean I have a Pixel Two XL it's end of the road I can't upgrade anymore and that's a perfectly good device. I mean it's just like what Apple does with you know the six S and the seven and um, so uh, so it's good to see that that that. Apple has just done a great job of uh, adoption of their new OS. So, uh, but uh, with this article on uh, the value of the um, Samsung S21 versus the iPhone, it's twenty percent better, uh, despite having uh, been on sale for considerably less time than the iPhone 12 uh, lineup orders. Uh, in late January of, of 2021, the uh, Samsung Galaxy S21 series is failing to hold its value well as its main competitor. Um, uh, by measuring each handset's suggested retail price against its uh, monthly and total depreciation based on the value of goods and new services, Cell Cell had, was uh, the uh, uh, that company always is uh, analyzing this stuff was was able to precisely calculate it. Um, it says the tw- the iPhone 12 range had lost value by 18 to 33 percent since its la- launch in October 2020. The Samsung 20 S 21 series, on the other hand, significantly depreciated between 44 and 57 percent since its launch in January of 2021. That's only what five months or four months ago. Um, so yeah, it goes through all the depreciation values and all that stuff, but I, I'm not all surprised. I mean, I went and tried to value just my two XL, see if I could sell it. I'll get 30 bucks for it. So it's just, it's crazy what the values are with, yeah. the, with, the, with the Android. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually surprised it's only 20% more because the, the Android's devices, once they're, once they're used, they, they drop in value right away. Nobody wants to buy one. Um, there's just so many. The, the problem with Android phones is there's just so many other cheap b- brand new ones that you can buy right. uh, to replace it. That's going to be fa- faster and better anyway. So, um, you know, where the iPhones kind of, they do get better every year. It's still, you know, it's still good enough where people will spend that money to get an older iPhone where an older Android phone is just not good enough. It's again, it loses its software updates. It becomes slow. Like you, I have a, um, I have a galaxy tab, uh, phone, mm-hmm. not, uh, tablet that I bought for like, uh, it's like $150. Um, not even a year ago, maybe about a year ago. Um, it's the road. It's good. Well, it's getting the updates, but it's slow as hell. I mean, all of this, you know, it's just terribly slow. So, yeah. I mean, I have trouble giving that thing away at this point, so I'm just going to hold on to it. <laughs> I think I have an old one sitting in a drawer somewhere from like a number of years ago that it's probably, a, I don't even know what version of Android it is, but it, but actually it was pretty zippy. It was a Samsung one, um, but um, yeah, it's, it's way, had, way out of date. I had a, I had a Sony um, Xperia tablet when I lived in London. You can't get them really, you can't get them here so much. Um, mm-hmm. That thing was a beast though. It was, it was it was beautiful screen. It was pretty fast. It was waterproof. It was like the only tablet I've ever seen that was waterproof. You could actually take it in the bath and shower and the bowls with you. Um, but you know, for the most part, they're all kind of junk. I've owned yeah. a lot of them. And most of them are junk. But, but that's what we are. We we love our tech. <laughs> um, even even the junky ones. Yes, exactly. Um, next story. The Find My new third-party accessory support um, that is now has has now come out and uh, pretty exciting. Uh, they uh, Apple did announce on the Find My network it will support third-party devices and Mac rumors. Um, they announced this uh, actually just yesterday as we record this. Uh, uh, Apple announced today the launch of its Find My network associ- accessory program, which is designed to allow third-party Bluetooth uh, devices to be tracked in the Find My app along right alongside your Apple devices. According to Apple, the first accessory companies that are going to take advantage of this new Find My integration includes Belkin, no surprise, uh, Chipolo, and Van Moof, <laughs> uh, with uh, devices set to be av- available beginning uh, uh, next week as we record this. Um, so I know we talked about this at, with Belkin, Belkin, Belkin's Soundform Freedom True Wireless Airbuds. I did uh, a uh, review of those from CES. Um, and um, so... 
basically what it is. Apple does have a strict set of rules that all these devices have to have to follow. Um, Clean must be hearing all the privacy protections of the Find My Network, um, and uh, the the devices will be will be there. It'll have lost mode. It'll notify you if it's found. All that same stuff. You know, what do you think of this? This is I think this is, this is pretty game changing. I think Apple is smart with this. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it's uh, not Chipotle. Just Did I say Chipotle? You- no, I didn't no, say Chipotle. Didn't. No, oh, I didn't. okay. I was like, what? <laughs> but, I didn't say that. A lot of, uh, <laughs> the first time I read it, it, the first read it was a Chipotle. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, I had a Chipotle tracker once. I got, I reviewed it once for a, uh, it came in a wallet or something, but it's cool. Anyhow, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be nice to have other companies be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it also makes you wonder what AirTags are going to have that's different than what these other things are going to do. Like what's going to separate right. a Chipotle from an AirTag? At this point, um, so you know, we'll see where that goes. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to the trackers, um, at least yeah. because I, I could think of a bunch of things I would like to put one on. Um, you know, we hope the uh, was it uses the ultra wide band. Is that what it is? That uh, the U one yeah. chip, yeah. The U one chip. So it uses you know the 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 feeling is if there's enough devices out there with a U1 chip, then if that device gets near one of them, it will track it. So hopefully it catches on. Uh, I've used Tile and, you know, it's okay. But, yeah. you know, if it's in the middle of you know nowhere, you're not going to get a signal on it. And that's the problem with it. You have to be kind of close to uh, see where you're going. So, you know, it's a, uh, it's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Got a couple links to other other articles I won't go into depth with, but uh, one thing is that uh, third party support uh, f- with Find My is going to work with iOS fourteen point three and later, so you'll be able to use older version of iOS. You won't have to wait, to wait till the beta fourteen five. Um, and then, uh, and again, we just talked about this. Now, all these third party devices can access the U one chip. What that U one chip is going to give that the device is going to be give a, a much more exact accuracy of location because the U one chip is. Uh, does uh, do a better job of of, of uh, location and being able to find devices. Uh, uh, that's usually the U1 shipping is included on the iPhone 11 and it's also included on the iPhone 12. So it's so the, so the the relatively newer iPhones that have that. So, uh, but no, some exciting stuff here. So I'm I'm, I'm very excited. Um, and last story here, I just wanted to mention this too. I thought it was kind of cool. Is T-Mobile had launched its unlimited 5G home internet uh, for sixty dollars a month. I actually tested the 4G, and granted, it worked pretty good. I thought it was it was it was impressive enough. Uh, I thought it was a good good service, but I couldn't justify spending. Four, I think it was fifty bucks a month for 4G when I'm getting like you know 40, 40 and fifty meg speeds. Um, so. Um, so uh, they're, say, they're saying it's going to be available to about 30 million American, Americans across the United States um, and in rural areas. So it all depends on what the 5G is, coverage is. So if it doesn't have 5, you don't have 5G available, you would, uh, would step down to 5, 4G. But of course, you'll still pay that. Um, they're promising a- a average speeds of about 100 megabits for most customers. Um, and I'm, I'd be curious to see if it's uh, uh, if it's up and down. Uh, probably not. I'm sure up is going to be a lot slower than down will be. Um, uh but uh, you can go to visit uh, T-Mobile's website to see if you're eligible and if it's available. Uh, so that that was pretty ex- exciting too. Uh, also in this article, they actually talked about too is oh, what do you think? I mean, I think that's I, I think it's an interesting s- service uh, for someone who yeah. doesn't want to have to have to be locked to somebody like Comcast or or somebody it's, else. Well, I think it's going to be more for people that can't get good internet service. It's going to be for people that right. were using satel- satellite or didn't have anything uh, before that. So. Hopefully, uh, you know, you know that's a good price. It's not, you know, I think you could get Comcast or FiOS yeah. basic for probably cheaper than that. So, or about the same at least. So, um, you know, if it's if it's fast enough and they keep that price, and I could see it being useful in a, in a lot of other places, like uh, maybe like a beach home, or maybe even like a if you like a. I'm wondering, like I'm thinking like a vacation trailer kind of like yeah, a yeah, you know yeah. something that moves i don't know it, you know it's interesting listen it's never a bad thing to have 5g in in a, in a pocket somewhere no. and you know never and be able to move it yeah so um at least it's not like poor verizon did you see the story that came out just mm. today verizon recalls 
2.5 million hotspots. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, they get yeah. they get they burn up or something or <laughs> yeah somebody re- uh, replied on the on the article well it is a hot spot that's, <laughs> that is that a Mac, Mac to the future did that oh, God, uh, no Mac Mac rumors so oh Mac rumors okay posted on Mac rumors and uh, somebody wrote that and then uh, yeah they're all kind of Samsung did it first I like that one too. yeah uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, and then they did add another part piece of this article that people didn't notice if you didn't go all the way down the bottom, read it, that uh, T-Mobile also today, uh, this was actually today as we record this, uh, announced a trade-in program for a free iPhone 12 with the trade-in of a iPhone 11, or half off an iPhone 12 with the trade-in of an older iPhone uh, model, ranging from a, uh, a iPhone 7 to an iPhone uh, 10, and uh and half off the iPhone 12 mini with the trade-in of any other, any older iPhone. Uh, trade-in compensation, of course, usually works with T-Mobile's 24 monthly bill credits. So you're not going to get the whole junk uh, once there. So, so another, another exciting thing. I think, um, um, I think uh, they're, they're doing, uh, do, doing good things with T-Mobile. Um, they're also, uh, upgrading their, their, uh, unlimited plans, uh, for T-Mobile and the old Sprint customers, uh, for free, uh, which is great. So, yeah, the, the, the mobile industry is very, very competitive. There's no question about it. They're trying to get you bu- get your business from you. and uh, I like them. I'm happy. I'm very happy with T-Mobile. I'm very happy. Yeah. I mean, they've, yeah. been, they've been good to me. So I can't complain. No one bit. So, all right, let's go jump into the topics of this week. And as we always talk about beta, uh, another version just came out. I think that was this yesterday as we record. Uh, iOS 14.5 beta 7. Uh, they seeded that. Uh didn't notice one gosh darn thing that was different <laughs> what it already has other than some probably some minor updates right yeah at this point apple is just i think trolling us at this point because <laughs> that's uh, right <laughs> I, I don't know what they're doing but i don't know whether to be like angry at them at this point or like you know just have to be happy that i'm just on a beta program because i would have gone nuts at, if i wasn't doing this uh, yeah. just knowing that th- this is out there i i think by the time they actually roll this out we're not going to be wearing masks anymore it's not going to matter so <laughs> seems um, like it <laughs> yeah we're getting close to it so although uh, tim cook in an interview said when it was that when asked when 14.5 is going to come out he says it's going to be coming out in a matter of weeks and what that means i have no idea <laughs> should have it should have been like a it's been like two or three months already on this thing, right? On the beta. It's been a while, at least two months. Yeah. It should have came out weeks ago. I, I, I this is, this is, I mean, I'm literally seeing no difference in the last three betas at all. So there must be something that nobody's, you know, notices Just or minor, something bad. Yeah, usually the, the, the bloggers tend to find the, the differences. I don't see much. Yeah. Um, um, it's just, at this point, it's just kind of like annoying more than, you know, I'm happy to get the beta update just to you know see if it improves something that I'm not noticing. But you know, yeah. at my my poor son, like I, the whole story I told you where he uh, got my old watch and I got a, the new one right. because my old watch was stuck on the beta. So my son's been stuck on this beta cycle because you know <laughs> because the watch was updated. So I told him I'm like, yeah, not too long that they'll release this version and you'll be off in beta. And that was. That was a month or two ago. That was, was it? longer than that. I mean, three that, months. I, yeah, I, and, I, and that's already was on like beta three or something. At that point. That's the longest they've ever gone, and in, and uh, yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with the privacy, which I want to talk about here in a bit here, um, and because uh, 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 yeah, it's it's just it's just diff- interesting to see. Uh, See why where this this goes. I just don't understand it. Um, the, the, I did link to another article on uh, Apple does remind developers about the upcoming app tracking transparency enforcement. Uh, that the developers, hey, you got to be ready to be enforced when this launches. And I think so. And I'm pretty sure that's what's really stalling a lot of this is is you know the resistance of already that they've been getting on this app tracking. Um, process uh i would i would i would think that's where we're really at don't you think something something's holding it up so i guess uh, um, but uh, get there. but uh i want i wanted to touch a little bit about it as as we move off of beta here is um and like we're like we just been talking about when when is 14.5 finally get it released um I, I have a link in the article here actually it's in the wall street journal um joanna stern um Wrote this great article with uh, uh, with uh, Nicole Gwynn um, about uh, iPhone apps asking to track you, 
answers to your iOS 14.5 privacy questions. And they did a really good write up about this. Um, um, and, uh, and I, I like, uh, I like the opening of the article saying, allow the Sims to track your activity, allow Merriam Webster to track your activity, allow the wall street journal to track your activity. Welcome to the start of the iPhone and iPad privacy pop a loser, pop up a loser. <laughs> so, you know, the tracking is really is going to be an interesting thing. So now what they are be doing is, is uh, each time an app is installed for the first time, as well as when you go to the app store, it's going to it already it already shows you in the app store what what they what they uh, can can share of your information if you allow it. Um, and the pop ups go, um, go on there. And I did a funny thing. I, there was a, there was another article I don't have linked here, but uh, that showed the entire long list of what what Facebook does. And it, it literally, if you would put it up on paper, it's gotta be at least four pages of, of all the things that, uh, that, 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 uh, Facebook does. And then, you know what, I, I, I appreciate the fact that Apple is being vigilant enough to make sure that, that, that they have, uh, they, they're looking out for their users and, and giving the ability to, for us to opt out if we want to. I mean, I know, I know your position on Facebook as far as, you know, it's not a big deal as far as the privacy goes, but, uh, some people are not happy with it. So, uh, uh, uh what do you think so far with the, what we talk about here with the, with app, uh, uh, security? I, so, I think it's, so you gotta be, you're kind of run into, um, you know, reading fatigue. And I think yeah. that's going to be a problem. If, if these pop-ups come up all the time, you know, whether you're installing, Facebook or something that you know barely you know tracks your privacy but still has a pop up because they're all gonna have pop ups. Users are just gonna you know most users are just gonna say always allow always allow at this point because they're just not gonna feel like going through the list uh, to 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 answer it unless they're specifically concerned about you know an app or something like that. You know I've been in apps that you would never think would need access to things, but you know once in a while you'll stay at this app but you know needs your location, you know, is, do you want yeah. to allow it? And I'm like, you know, why does this need my location? But, you know, generally I'll just say yes, because maybe it does, you know. So I think it, it when when Mac OS had a problem where it was popping up a lot, I think in one of the versions, uh, I forget which one it was, it was popping up with a lot of notifications, people were complaining about that. So I think you get the notification uh, fatigue and they have to be careful with that. Yeah, I agree. Then that, that's that, and that's really what the issue is going to be. Um, so um, they they put a grid here, just showing how how um, how things are are, are, are work are the what kind of a workflow, showing what data is collected, how it's how it gets processed, or the device ID, the contact info, the purchase history. Uh, a social app will have device info. Uh, di- device ID, contact info, location of device, app search history, app usage data. Um, and so it, it, they did an interesting thing of showing the disclosure of that. And then you got to wonder, they are, they you're going to always wonder why you're getting, getting these pop-ups, but that's the reason you're getting them is be giving the option. I mean, once you opt in or opt out, it won't, it shouldn't bother you again. You can allow or ask app not to track. Um, and Again, like we like, talk, like we mentioned, Apple was building its Apple does build itself as a commitment to user privacy. They put it even harder in like we talked about we've talked about this before, the Safari web browser, uh, where it attracts people in the Safari web browser, where it shows it does do a very good job of telling you what, what trackers are being uh, used. You know, go to go to CNN <laughs> to see how many trackers are on with all the advertising that they do, um, yep. and you have that you have that ability too. Don't you? you know, I, I, I'm sure you agree with that with the, with the browser, right? Yeah, and just a little known fact, you could all major browsers let you turn that on somewhere. There's there's settings everywhere that lets you yeah. know if you're being tracked or not. So, um, you you know, people say oh, Chrome is so insecure and Edge is better and whatever. They all do have that option. That you, if you dig into it, it says uh, warn me if I'm being tracked. So, yeah, just a little, little FYI on that. And this, this is a good quote in here, too, from the late Steve Jobs. Um, you know, he said this back in 2010 at the All Things Digital Conference. I believe some people want to share more data than other people do. Ask them. So I think that really kind of probably started the inspiration of the, of this happening. Yeah. And again, a lot of, you know, a lot of people also think if I don't say allow, it's not going to work right. Or it's gonna the app is not gonna function the way it's supposed to function, and that may be the case. So I mean, we'll find out when people start opting out of some of these, you know, things. 
is that going to change the behavior of the application? Like if you opt out of Facebook, you know, a lot of these things on Facebook, you know, is, is it going to be a whole different experience um, than, than it was if uh, maybe it's a better experience, but maybe not. Maybe it, it like doesn't yeah. know who you are anymore. I don't know who you are anymore, man. I can't, I can't, <laughs> can't help you. I can't tell you what you want to hear. Um, the good thing is going to be is when you go into in 14.5, when you go into privacy, you'll be able to go into tracking and be able to turn on. There's a list to allow apps to request to track. You can turn it all on and then individually turn off ones you don't want to track, or you can just turn them all on and then just uh, don't even think about it. So, um, so you will have you will have options to go back and and turn on later if you turn them back on later if you if you so choose. So, um, but uh, like you said, uh, no one's going to really know. You tap all allow, and it's going to be business as usual. I mean, you're going to be able to. You're going to be able to uh, do what you're going to do, and you probably won't notice anything when you do it. So um, I just can't see that being anything different. Um, and and I think it's a, I think it's a good thing, in my opinion. Yep. Any closing okay. thoughts on that? No, I mean, I've I've never been against I've never been against uh, uh, um, uh, apps, you know companies telling you what they're collecting. I mean, that's, that's always a good thing. You know, what I have more concern about is, you know, understanding of what they're collecting and understanding if it's, you know, if it's a harmful thing that they're collecting or, or if it's not, and, you know, the reasoning and the big thing I come back to is the, uh, the advertising, you know, for the most part, they use, yeah. you know, tracking to, to advertise. I mean, that's where the money is. They would, they want to sell you things. There's no, unless they're selling things that they don't want, you know, like, you know, security numbers and credit cards, you know, legal things. That's what, that's, a, that's what it is. It's, it's 99% advertising. So if you opt out of that, then that's going to affect the ads you see and uh, things like that. So if that's your thing, then go for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, next topic is, uh, we, you know, I try not to talk too much about like rumored products. I mean, we, we mentioned it, but uh, I think, you know, I think there's pretty solid evidence at this point that there's going to be new iPads coming out soon. Um, and I uh, found an interesting article um, um, on Mac Rumors about this uh, actually was uh, released uh, today uh, as we record. Um, a, a, a leaked dummy units show the iPad mini six with thick bezels and a home button and new iPad pro models. And uh, this is the famous tech leaker. All the leakers are out on Twitter, um, and they have a picture showing uh, comparisons between the the three models of the Pro, uh, the, the Mac, the iPad Mini, the Pro 11, and the and the Pro 12.9. Um, and um, they're, they're seeing really, I think that what really stands out from the previous models is the home button and the, and the uh, the thick bezel uh, uh, that are on the top and bottom. Um, uh, but uh, I. I, I I I think that this is interesting to know. At least now we know that there is going to. Uh, at least, at least we think, based on rumors here, that there will be, will be a new iPad Mini. Um, I think that's a smart thing, and they're saying that the screen size is going to be something like eight point four inches, and I think that's the biggest. If that is, that is true, that's the biggest iPad Mini I, I can that's ever been made. Um, so maybe we'll have some exciting things that we trade in iPads here. You know, uh, what do you think of this? I think this is interesting. Um, I've been always wanting. A iPad Mini that looks like the new iPad Pro, yeah. but there's good and bad to it. And I think the the, the hard part is the um, it's, it's hard to hold something that small with no bezels. Um, I think that's been said a few times. I love my iPad Minis. I've, I've had them all. Um, mm -hmm. I actually sold my five because I couldn't justify I have it barely used the pro and so I didn't need to two of them. Um, I initially actually bought the mini because uh, you could put it uh, in, a, in a holder and fly your drone with it but I never did it uh, that either. Um, but yeah I mean if, if they came out like with a eight inch mini with thinner bezels and like a face ID I would, I would buy that. I don't know if I would buy another one that looks kind of exactly the same as the old ones at this point. Yeah, according to that picture, that looks like that iPad Mini looks exactly the same with the with the home button and the thick buzzle. Um, yeah. If you look at the other picture of it with the on the glass side, um, the the Pros look pretty much the same. Um, so yeah, but the yeah, I see the back of the Mini that looks uh, pretty much the same, and the front looks pretty much the same. So um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a good device, but you know, I think it's dated. I think it's very outdated, yeah. um, the, the yeah. looks of it. And, um, you know, a, a, a mini with like a nice OLED screen, that'd be awesome. I, I would, you know, love that. Um, and then um, the rumors are saying that the, that the A14X processor would be uh, uh, would be in these in these iPad Pros, which is quote unquote on par to the M1 that's in the MacBook Air Pro and Mini, um, but with better cameras. Um, uh, and they're saying the Mini LED display that was that was the discussion too, uh, that was giving them even more extreme brightness on the display should be interesting. Um, and also rumor too is a potential Thunderbolt connector that would make it even more compatible with external monitors, hard drives, and peripherals. That would be instead of just a standard USB C, it's an actual Thunderbolt um, you know, connector in the iPad. Yeah, I mean, probably with you, unless they like really change something else with the iPad Pro. I, I, like the the Thunderbolt connector doesn't interest me too much. The faster processor doesn't really interest me too much because I barely use the processor power that I have in a Pro. Um, right. You know, if it looked nicer, um, the display, that would interest me, um, I think, it, you know, because that, that's always a, something you notice right away. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, the iPad Pro has hit some kind of, uh, you know, plateau, I think, where it's just so good the, that it's, you know, it's hard to improve on it right now. That You really have to almost come up with a whole different design or, or something that really is going to make you want to, replace a 2008 uh or 2018 ipad pro yeah i, I agree well, we'll see what happens i mean i'm sporting as a as a as a um a second ipad i have the ipad pro first generation that, that had the lightning connector um mm -hmm. and that's still a pretty perfectly good ipad i mean it's still pretty fast and, and you know I'm, i've been running beta on it uh, for a long time uh, it yeah. only has 32 gigs of, of space so that's pretty limited but uh um but uh, it it you know these iPads in that generation have been pretty decent. You know, for and, the most part. And the the new era, which is just like this, you know, almost the same oh. as the iPad Pro. I mean, it's yeah. awesome. I mean, again, they they're there's not that much. You know, I say this all the time, and they always prove me wrong. But there's not much you can improve it. Uh, you know, just I I can't. You could visualize improvements with like a like an iMac and and some other things. You could see what they could do differently, yeah. but I can't even visualize what they could possibly change on the iPad uh, on the iPad Pros at this point. Yeah, hopefully no, they I, prove us wrong. I agree. And yeah. rumors are saying that uh, there's there's supposed to be a, an event this month in April, but you know it's still. It's interesting. A lot of different, very different this year with Apple with, with this kind of stuff. Will they do it as a press of, press release or will they do it as an event? We don't know, but we're hoping to see these iPads soon along. Like we mentioned earlier about the AirTags, you know, I'm, uh, that's been rumored for, I think we're getting close to two years on this now. <laughs> at least at least it seems like it is. Um, we're going to get it with iOS 14.5 in a couple, yeah. of, uh, couple of months. Maybe. Yeah, I'm looking forward to something. I mean, it's it's the last time I actually put something out. They had that big streak last year with uh, those three events right in a row, and that was uh, that was it. So yep. it's been it's time it's time for something new. Yep. All right, let's move on. Another topic here, uh, Warren. You you uh, said you dabbled into some NFC tags, and of course, you own a Tesla, and Tesla doesn't is, isn't very Apple friendly uh, as as you wish it was. It has a nice yeah. big screen in, on your dashboard. It's about the size of a, a 13 inch iPad, uh, but. Uh, very limited of, of, of anything related to Apple and, and it doesn't do CarPlay, it doesn't do all that stuff. So you uh, you dabbled the, the NFC tags to see uh, what it could do uh, uh, for you. Uh, why don't you first off just tell people what, what is an NFC tag? What is it? What is what does it do? So an NFC tag is basically they could be a sticker or they could be like a little bit thicker uh, of that or it could actually be on almost anything that mm -hmm. um, you can tap an NFC compatible reading device and an iPhone is one to it and it will read the information off the tag to just identify it. And then from there, you could assign that tag to do things. And with the iPhone, what you're doing is you're doing, um, you're assigning um, a series shortcuts to a NFC tag. So basically you could get an NFC tag, scan it, assign it to an action with a shortcut 
And then uh, from there, all you have to do is tap your phone to the, to the sticker and it'll run shortcut. Um, the stickers themselves are fairly cheap. You, I mean, they come in different sizes and shapes and colors, um, mm-hmm. but you could get like a 12 pack of stickers for you know, like 10 bucks. So it's, it's really not uh, that much. Um, so the way I use it is the Tesla makes you spend $300 to get a garage door opener built into your car. Crazy. And <laughs> it's, I mean, to be, to be fair, it's like a super garage door opener. It, it, you know, it knows it opens when you come home, it, you know, it, it opens when you leave, it knows how to do all the things. So, you know, I'm here thinking, you know, I don't have to, I, I, I have my Garage is hooked up to Wi-Fi. My car, like, is hooked up to Wi-Fi. My phone, everything is connected to the internet. There's got to be a way for me to open and close the garage without, you know, yeah, paying this. So, uh, so basically, I bought a couple of NFC tags and made a this um, series shortcuts to open and close my garage. And I put two mm-hmm. stickers in my car, um, one to open it, one to close it. And all I have to do is tap my phone to those stickers, which is pretty easy. And it does, it works uh, for that. So then I start thinking, what else can I do with these stickers? So um, that's what I've been thinking <laughs> about doing. Uh, last week, we talked about changing shortcuts. So I have a sticker now that will change my shortcut if I just tap it, which is kind of neat too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've also been playing with Homebridge, and what Homebridge is is, uh, is a program you can install on a variety of computers, which are either um, a Mac, uh, a Raspberry Pi, Windows computer. Um, and getting very geeky here. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little geeky. But what you, in a nutshell, what it does is it tie it bridges home kit devices that are not compatible. That um, I'm sorry, it bridges devices that are non home kit compatible to kind of work with home kit and it does it kind of in a, in a, in a geeky, geeky way where, it, you know, pretty much uses that computer as a, as a in between of the two devices to, you know, translate the code. And it's works. Sometimes it's flaky. It really makes me, you know, really want, Tesla, uh, Apple to have more HomeKit devices because so many things you could do. So I hooked up my, you know, my Tesla doesn't um, doesn't have any kind of uh, HomeKit support, but there is a te- Tesla API for the HomeBridge that I put in there. And now from my phone, I, I'm able to, um, uh, you know, do a lot of things with the Siri. I could open up my trunk. I could open up my doors. I could uh, start, you know, start to, to climb in and all that things that I couldn't do before. But as I said, it's flaky. It started waking up my Tesla every minute and sending notifications. And, and when you have a home kit set up with a family, everybody gets notifications. So it kept waking up my Tesla and then the whole family was getting notifications. So I had to turn it off. So <laughs> it's got issues. But between the home home bridge and the NFC stickers, it's kind of a new world. You could really get into um, a lot of things. But home bridge out of it. The stickers, uh, the NFC tags are really simple. Uh, you don't need to be a tech. You, you, you go out to Amazon, you uh, do a search for NFC uh, tags or stickers, get mm-hmm. like a 10 pack, and um, you know basically it walks you right through. You go to Siri shortcut, um, create a new shortcut, um, and it's going to ask what the automation is. If you scroll down, uh, it actually – I misspoke. It's not under shortcuts. It's tab over. It's automations is what you have to do. Right, under. automations. So you go under automations. You go under personal automations. You scroll to the bottom. You say NFC tag. Uh, you click on it. It says, okay, scan the tag now. You're going to scan it. You give it a name, and then that's it from then, and then you just add your actions to it. So hmm. and it's not bad. I find it better sometimes than saying you know, there's, like, times where you don't want to say, hey, S, lady, you know, um, right. which, you know. If you're in a car and somebody's with you, you don't want to really. That's kind of, you know, it's it's not coop, coop. What's the word? Coop. It's 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 not cool to uh, kind of say hey, se sometimes to when you're driving. Yeah. So I like to text that situation. So Did, um, yeah. So um, I just I just it's, it's interesting why Tesla just won't won't gonna give into that. There's just so many people who have iPhones these days. That uh, and I know, and it's Elon Musk, and he he just wants to keep control of things. Um, and well, it just... you hear different stories. I mean, Elon Musk said he uh, he call, tried to call uh, uh, Tim Cook, and 
you know, get some, you know, ask him to invite a company. And Tim Cook never returned a call from what Elon said. And then Tim Cook says uh, he didn't, didn't say anything about it, but he says he respects Elon. Um, it's It would have to be totally re-ripped from the ground up because the Tesla system is yeah. so integrated in itself that it would be almost, uh, you know, would autopilot on a level of dangerous to, to kind of integrate it at this point. Um, yeah. Because again, it, you know, the way you auto drives, uh, the way it auto drives is based on, you know, a lot of things that it knows about the maps and its location and to change all that would be a pain. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with that said, I am jealous of you with your uh, upcoming car play because that is uh, yeah. I'm I'm excited to, uh, nice. to 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 talk about it with everybody and uh, that that was more of the motivating factor of anything is just I want I wanted I, I've been just itching for the technology. My car was a 2011. Anyways, mm-hmm. I, I have Dodge Charger, so uh, you know, technology is old. It, it really is. I mean, UConnect is actually a pretty decent. Uh, interface uh, considering uh, uh I, i've seen it in other cars like gm and um and ford and 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 you know they've gotten smarter and now they're including carplay that they, they you know just couldn't resist so um this one's also going to have android auto too so I, I i may even dabble into both to see how uh how they compare and then that's gonna be kind of cool i can do that because i can do yeah, android auto the, and and, and do. carplay on this yeah so yeah i've seen that where they're, they're both uh, integrated together um well, definitely let us know. I mean, uh, yep. you know, to be fair, the Tesla system is not bad. It's a good, you know, it's good. It's really good, but it's no car play. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, the, what we have left here is some tips. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple tips here I found um, uh, in the camera. Uh, you know, in iOS 14, Apple did change the uh, the shutter release. So if you, if you remember before, you used to be able to tap and hold the shutter button on 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 the face of the f- iPhone, and you'd be able to do a burst, you know, burst shots, and just hold it and go da 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 and take the pictures. Well, you can't do that anymore. Um, it, it 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 got hidden somewhere. So what you can do with with burst, if you go to the photo mode and you just you don't you don't tap on it, you just you just uh, touch it and slide it over to the right to the left. Uh, without tapping, and then you're going to see the countdown uh, on the button. So you can slide over to the completely to the to the left, and then just hold it there, and you can do a bunch of burst photos as you're taking it. You know, so you just swipe it over. So uh, I thought that was a kind of a cool thing. And then another another tip is uh, uh, saving you from uh, on video without having to actually spend the time to toggle over to the video mode and then start doing your video. You can do it so you can stay in photo mode. Um, of course, I always recommend you gotta go in landscape mode when you take a picture of a video because uh, uh, you know how how awful it looks when people are, and and you know people mm-hmm. always are filming in portrait mode and then you see yeah. it on TV when they have the blurred they have the blurred uh, um, yeah. uh, edges of it because it's in the bad mode. Um, so then what you do is you 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 don't tap it, you slide the the button to the right, and then it's going to start recording video. So then once it does that, it records, and then when you're done, you just slide it back, and then it stops recording video. And it's all in one place, so you don't have to have to be switching modes all the time. So then you're, I mean, when you're taking pictures, you want you might want to have the option to be able to be recording video and then and photos all at the same time. Now, of course, when you're in video mode, it does have the button there that gives you the option to take pictures while you're doing video if you so choose. Um, so it has that too. So I think I think those those two tips just stand out. Some of the flexibility of the camera app and how powerful it really is. You know, people like to look at other third party apps, and there's plenty of plenty of them out there that, that take pictures and do different things that you know filmic pro is, is a good example for video and filmic pro is a really advanced video uh, 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 app so definitely interesting to see without how that goes so um i did did you ever know those tips i don't know if you knew if you knew about those no no i definitely have not i need to uh need to brush up on my video and photo taking skills as it yeah is, so yeah so i think that, that it'll make, make things a lot easier uh, when you're taking photos um, and, and, and taking videos for that matter. Um, nice. The second tip, second tip I have here is, and I completely forgot about this. Um, you know, there is a built-in code reader uh, in, and they, they added, I, I don't know if it was an iOS 13 or iOS 14. Um, um, 
the, the ability of being able to read uh, a QR code. Now, of course, you can use the camera and go up to a QR code and then it sees it and then it'll just automatically, you know, go to the website or wherever or wherever you're, you're, you're going and what the QR code does. But there is an app built in that you, that, that you can get to and you can get to it in two ways. Um, if you do a uh, if you do a swipe down on one of the home pages and then start typing in code then the code scanner app will start showing up. Now, you cannot bookmark this 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 app. You can't put it anywhere on a home screen. Um so that's that's one way of getting to it. And then you tap it and of course, you know, it's got the the normal code um scanner so it just codes and scans it and it's got a built-in flashlight so it'll light it up so it's easy to see. But the other place you could do is put it in is you can actually put it in in control center. If you go into settings and then if you go into control center, um, it does have the option as one of the added controls uh, that you can add um, the uh, uh, the code scanner. You just push the plus brings it up to the menu there. So that's there on the menu. Uh, then if you go up, scroll down to control scanner on the, on the iPhone, um, on the, the newer phones uh, with the face ID, you swipe it up from the, from the, the right down on the older phones, you swipe from the bottom and then you have that code scanner ready to go. You just tap it and it'll open it up and you get that up. So I, cool. I, I think, I think those are I two. Think it's useful. If you've been to a, a restaurant in the last uh, couple of months, yeah. uh, they don't have menus or a lot. Most of them don't. They have a QR code to scan at the table um, to uh, get the menus. So yeah. a lot of people are learning about QR codes that didn't necessarily know about them before. And then with app clips, that's the big thing now. Of course, we've talked about that before, you know, going places like Panera Bread where you can um, uh, where you can um order things right from an app clip, not have the app installed is, is also a big thing too. So, um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool. So, yep. all righty. Unless uh, you have anything else you want to talk about, we'll go ahead and wrap things up here. Does that sound good to you? It's, it, it, it turned out to be a lot of things going on this week, which is, yeah, it sure did. Sure did. Yep. So then that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can uh, follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. You can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and 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 many others, including Odyssey. You know, they, they changed their name from radio.com to Odyssey. We're on there still. We moved over, so you can you can listen to us on there. But you know, the best place to go is just go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I'm Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And Warren, thanks for being here. Anything, was anything going on with Mac in the future this week? We didn't do a podcast yesterday with a guy, so uh, no, this has been a yeah. light podcast week. <laughs> yeah, I only did the one, so I'm, I'm good this week. Um, yeah, just uh, good, good conversations, like usual. Uh, nobody uh, nobody yeah. saying anything out of the ordinary. But, Pe- you know, people buying uh, new M1s and getting excited about it. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we, we get at least one or two a week of somebody saying, should I, you know, I, I do this and this for work and should I get the M1? And, uh, you know, generally the answer is a, a, you know, outstanding yes. Most uh, people, yes. Nobody really says no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing bad about it. So, yeah, yeah. do that. Uh, yeah, it's a great group to join. It's on Facebook, yeah. Mac to the future. Just uh, go into Facebook, search for it, come join us. I'm about like four thousand members now. I think it is now. It's good. It's good. It's yeah. gone way up. We get a few every uh, every day. We get a few more. So come yeah, join us so sure. it's a good group. Come, come check us out, and we have a lot of fun here. So, well, yeah. I appreciate everybody listening here. We really appreciate uh, you uh, listening, and, and hope you enjoy the show because we enjoy doing it. And uh, we'll talk again soon.